walking without skin, managing adversity with vulnerability. Pornography is 88.2% physical aggression towards women. So when we give a pornographic material to our sons, our grandsons, our nephews, the sons, grandsons, nephews of our friends, we are essentially teaching our boys to be hostile towards girls and women as they grow older, as they start dating. So we're teaching our boys and girls that girls are commodities, objects, and products. And we're teaching our boys, right, also that they are commodities, objects, and products because there is such a thing as gay porn, LGBTQ porn. So it's a very unhealthy, unsafe way to be sexually active, if you will. Where can I find some protection to prevent this ongoing infection? I'm walking without skin. Walking without skin. You are listening to Walking Without Skin, the show where we encourage our guests to be vulnerable to share their voices with authenticity, to tell their stories from the heart. We will talk about hope and recovery, about overcoming loss, changes, challenges, and adversities. We will walk without skin. And here is your host, Lois Wagner. Hi, I am Lois, your friend for forgiveness and the creator of Walking Without Skin. I have a book with the same title, Walking Without Skin. Today, I have the pleasure of chatting to Sabrina Oso. She is the founder and CEO of Oso Safe. Feel safe where you live, work and play. And I so wish I could feel safe where I lived, worked and played. Uh, She is a TEDx speaker, real estate agent, and consultant on promoting safety and preventing violence in the workplace, schools, and in places of residence. Hi, Sabrina. Hello, Lois. What a pleasure to be here with you. What a pleasure to have you on the show. I'm so looking forward to our conversation. Before we get into your work, please can you tell me what the phrase walking without skin means to you? I thought about this actually, because I, I, it's very raw. <laughs> to me, it just, it's stripping away all of our bad stuff or stuff that we don't need and just bearing our the truth. I think that's what it means to me, really. No nonsense, just bearing ourselves completely. So that way we could heal. And that way we can help ourselves and others to heal. Fabulous. Thank you for that. So Sabrina, what led you to do this, the work that you do? What prompted you to start this journey that you're on in terms of safety? Well, I lived in a very unsafe environment. I've had enough therapy, off and on therapy, to be comfortable enough to say that my father beat my mother on a regular basis and my mother would abuse me and... It was very toxic environment and and this went on for years, years and years, decades. And then I moved out 
And I did what I was supposed to do, go to university, get my degree. But my therapist said, Sabrina, you're a dancer. Because I am. I am a dancer. I love to dance. It, it's my DNA, my essence. But I could not even think about dance in my home because it was so volatile. So, but I, when I moved out, I took a risk and I, I said, let me abandon everything and just go for it. So I, I danced. I, I was taking 12 classes a week in the city. I was heavy duty clubbing. At that time, there were many clubs in New York City. I live in close proximity to New York, and I felt so free. I felt so liberated dancing, and um, I was taking vocal lessons. I was auditioning, and I was getting gigs. However, I started writing my one-woman show, and the one-woman show is called Home Sweet Home? Question mark. And I did a lot of research for the show, and I could not believe the statistics that I was finding, how prevalent abuse and violence and chaos is, because I wanted the show to be entertaining as well as educational. And I said to myself, I need to make this into a business, into a bona fide business with products and services. And I... I performed my show with my dance students at the time because I was dance teaching and the show, I play different women being abused. She goes to her good place. That's where her, the dancing comes in, but she's pulled back into the terror of violence and the show ends very strong, very empowering. And that's how Oh So Safe was born really from this one woman show and the research and yeah, I hope I answered the question. You certainly did. I'd love to see that show. Do you do it virtually or is it only on stage? There is a trailer. And if you Google Sabrina Oso, it is on the internet, the trailer. And uh, I did do snippets of it like on online, but it's only shown live. What I hope to do soon is to revive it. And that's, that'll be a project a little bit later on, but I do plan on reviving it with everything that I'm doing with Oh So Safe. And yeah, uh, but thank you for that. Yes, uh, it, it is out there in snippets. Because <laughs> that would be so powerful because people don't listen to words as much as they look at pictures, they look at movements. What sort of dancing do you do? A little bit of everything. I, I trained in everything. Ballet, the show has Latin, Latin partnering, or a flamenco, theater jazz, African. There's an African piece, a swing piece. And then like a club, powerful in your face, we're going to do this song at the end, very strong. So a little bit of everything. It sounds magnificent. Can't wait to go and see the snippets of it. Thank you. Sabrina, so tell us a little bit about the actual work that you do, Oh So Safe. What is it that you do? Yes. We combine education and technology to promote safety and prevent violence in the workplace, schools, but in particular in your place of residence. Our core market is the real estate industry, and I've thought long and hard about this. I said to myself, what did I need growing up as a child of a victim of violence, if you will? And our core product is the Oh So Safe Home Sweet Home Package. And this will deem your property oh so safe certified. What does that mean? We are marketing this to landlords and tenants right now in the tri-state area. But we want this to propagate over all residency. And our vision is to have this global. But right now we're concentrating locally, obviously. And we're saying, look, Mr. and Miss Landlord, 
Hire us. We'll get your property Oso oh Safe certified. Purchase the Oso oh Safe Home Sweet Home package. It consists of a policy, a seminar, an app, and therapists assigned to the property. The policy basically states, I as a landlord, I promise to provide you a safe space for you to live. You in turn as my tenant, you promise to not act in any way, shape or form abusively. Otherwise you, the abuser only gets immediately evicted from the premises. And we go into full knowledge knowing that that would be the consequences. So there's no surprises. So that way, it mitigates liability, it maintains property reputation, your tenants feel safe, and your vacancy rates will drop. Then we do a seminar. Everybody gets educated, Lois, everybody, both new and existing tenants on facts, statistics, warning signs, definitions of abuse, the difference between abuse and discipline. So there's no excuse like, oh, I didn't know that if I pull my partner's hair, that that constitutes abuse. Oh, I didn't know that if if I call my partner a whore, a tramp, a slut, that that is verbal abuse. Now you know. So this is more on the preventative side. Then there is an app. And right now it's being updated, but this app detects violent like movements and captures them in real time, issuing alerts to the landlord. So let's say a landlord has 10 units. He or she or they get the alert. Wow, I just saw you beat the crap out of her in my unit two, and you just beat the crap out of him in my unit 10. This is grounds for eviction. You knew that this was going to happen. You are held to a higher regard, a higher standard in an Oso oh Safe certified property. It's no nonsense here. And we maintain property reputation, and everybody's better off for it. So that's the app. I hired a software company, and they go by my specifications according to what I want the app to do. Then the last component of the package is therapists are assigned to the property. You are required to check in with your therapist. It's part of your rent once a month. Is everything okay? Do you feel like anything is looming? Well, actually, our kid came home and they said that they're gay. We know we're not going to beat them up. We're not going to verbally abuse them. We know that we're held to a higher regard, a higher standard in this Oso Safe certified property. Help us through this. We don't know what to do. So therapists are assigned to the building and or to the property, and it's a part of residency. Lois, this is a much better approach. Is It's all on the preventative side. Now, there's more components, like let's say when violence occurs, but for the sake of this interview, I just wanted to simplify it. It's a much better approach versus waiting for an episode of violence to occur and then doing something. I hope I explained. You did. It sounds absolutely fantastic. It covers everything. And wow, the only question I have is what about single unit homes? Yes. You mean like single family homes? Yes. Rather than a block or apartment. Right, right. Like I said, we want this to propagate over all residency. So let's say you're saying like, let's say I own my home and and there's violence that happens, right? Not a rental, just to be clear, correct? Yes. And also people who are renting a single, a single story or a single unit. Yes. Standalone right, unit. Right, right. Right. It's the same thing. It's the same application. We have therapists assigned to the home, to the single family home, and and then the app will be installed. And it's the same application. We are speaking to insurance companies where riders will be put in insurance policies to say, look, if there is any violence that happens, or even if it doesn't happen, you are protected where you are covered for losses due to home violence. So that way, this is a financial incentive for landlords, for property owners. And 
we want this to carry over any residency, even if you if you own a mortgage, like you own a property and you have a mortgage or not. And this would be where the insurance company would benefit from this to kind of partner with Oso Safe to say, look, we are on the preventative side. We don't condone this type of behavior. And this makes for better residency. And we have a saying at Oso Safe. Safer residency makes for better residency and therefore is better for business. This is better for business all around. And let's face it, Lois, money talks. Money talks all around. So, And we're putting a price tag on this. And we're looking to make it where also the property is worth more if it's also safe certified because we are keeping the residents safe as well as the structure. So it goes hand in hand. I hope I answered the question. You certainly did. Have you got some buildings that are already also safe certified? We're working on it. We're working on it. I'm a real estate agent, so I'm trying to bridge the real estate industry through my real estate agent contacts to do this. This is fairly new. And it's kind of really educating the public that we exist and that this is a completely different way to think of residency because we're making safety a standard condition, a required standard condition of residency. And we're saying, look, get it out of the courts because I have to say here in the States, they do a very poor job in keeping people safe. And I'm speaking from personal and professional experience Get it out of the courts. If you get your properties also safe certified, you don't need the courts. You don't need the expensive lawyers, the mediators, the parent coordinators, the child protective service agencies, and the judges. You don't need any of it. You resolve it right in residency where it needs to be resolved. And children, children suffer the most. There are 15 million children that witness violence in their own homes each and every year, just in the United States. And those are just the ones that are documented. And we have provisions in our policies in the OSO Safe Certification where children have rights and they get to speak out. They have agency over their lives. We do not wait until they are 18 years old to have control over their lives in this regard. It's ridiculous to wait until 18. Children know who makes them feel safe. If it's not mom and dad, if mom and dad are abusive, they know who respects them. They know who makes them feel safe and good and empowered. Um, So I like what you said that it covers a lot. It covers everything. And that's our goal to have as the least amount of loopholes as possible. Yeah, if we could get that into homes around the world, I would be such a happy woman. <laughs> I think that could solve Me too. so many That's problems. the goal. Could solve so many problems around the world. You also mentioned a, a correlation between pornography and violence. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. I could talk about this subject for hours, just on this alone. Pornography is a big driver of violence, huge, huge. And we are not talking about sexual freedom at Oso Safe. This has nothing to do with sexual freedom. You want to turn your home, your place of residence into a jungle and have good sexual experiences We're all for it. We're not talking about that. Pornography is 88.2% physical aggression towards women. So when we give a pornographic material to our sons, our grandsons, our nephews, the sons, grandsons, nephews of our friends, we are essentially teaching our boys to be hostile towards girls and women as they grow older, as they start dating. So this damages their psyche on multiple levels from and from an early age. So, and even women, and they're taught that 
violence, abuse, sexual violence in the sexual context is okay, is acceptable. Like we think that, oh, you like this, don't you? Um, I saw it in the magazine and I, I turn on my computer and it's all over the internet. So we're teaching our boys and girls that girls are commodities, objects, and products. And we're teaching our boys, right, also that they are commodities, objects, and products because there is such a thing as gay porn, LGBTQ porn. So it's a very unhealthy, unsafe way to be sexually active, if you will. And the other portion of this, Lois, and I'm so glad that you're allowing me to talk about this, and I've been very vocal about this. There is a genre of porn called a financial dominatrix. This is where the woman is the abuser. She is paid to sexually abuse her clients. This is consensual and legal, which is very disturbing. And these women, they should be called financial dominatrix is the glamorous title. They should be called a paid sex abuser. And it's extremely disturbing because these women are dangerous. They are manipulative, dominating, controlling. They will stop at nothing to get what they want. And they are they infiltrate in our societies, in our communities. Don't think that they are in some Playboy mansion far, far away in some Hugh Hefner extension of a mansion. They are part of our neighborhoods, as I mentioned, and they will, they act as upstanding good citizens, like they're part of our PTA. We have something in the States called the PTA is the parent teacher connection, where they get a say on, on, on rules in the school and, and just what goes on in student life. Meanwhile, they do convulsing, revolting, disturbing things on and off camera. And and there are videos of these women that have their clients in bondage and they're spitting in their mouths. They're smoking cigarettes and ashing in their mouths and they're kicking them. And this is all legal, Lois. And what happens is they prey on weak men and these men could have children and they rope them in and go out with them and they take up residency in our neighborhoods and in our societies and the atmosphere for the child is one of horror horror and the paid sex abuser woman financial dominatrix she gets aroused by all of this it's all Look what I can do. Look what I'm getting away with. It's legal. I have the courts by my side. I live in a very upscale neighborhood. Nobody suspects anything. Meanwhile, she does absolutely horrible things on and off camera. And she is indeed an abuser. And so I'm speaking out more and more about this because... The laws have to change, obviously, but people have to, like the mothers and the fathers, that it's very dangerous. And and I want to make it clear, the laws need to see, the courts need to see that this is parallel to sex trafficking, child rape, child pornography, child sex trafficking. It's the same tactics. It's predatory. It's dangerous. And the child suffers tremendously. So, and I'm going to be very much more vocal about this because the child living in this environment, it's a horrible environment, horrible. It's abuse, it's abuse, period, over and out. So this is all under the spectrum of home violence and under that spectrum is verbal, physical, sexual abuse. And that includes pornography. It includes a financial dominatrix. And, you know, people think that, oh, well, it's a woman. It's harmless. Like I said, these women are very dangerous. 
So what can we do as everyday citizens, what can we do to help prevent this kind of activity? Speak out about it. I'm being very, very vocal about it. And to write petitions, and I know that you have written petitions to say, look, that a financial dominatrix is essentially a paid sex abuser and that this is parallel to child trafficking, sex trafficking, child rape. It's the same. It's because all of those are illegal. The child rape, the sex trafficking, it's all illegal. This is to make it clear and to get us hired in your communities, in your schools, in your workplaces, and in particular in your place of residence, because we make it very clear in our seminars, workshops, speaking engagements, um, to get the, to create petitions to say, look, we don't want these people, and it's her that you don't want in your communities, in your societies, uh, that this fuels the violence that we see because rapists and abusers they look at pornography it's very closely linked there's no separation really uh the bill cosby's the roger ailes the jerry Standuskys, the a lot of it has to do with as i say pornography is a big driver of violence so and look out for people in your community. Like I said, they infiltrate in the PTA. They could be the cheerleader mom. They could be the soccer mom. Ask questions. What do you do for a living? And keep asking them. See what they say. If the answers change or they're inconsistent or they get very defensive, that's a warning sign that something is up. And, uh, and I would say um, they seem, keep asking those questions about what they do and also look at the child because a child's behavior will tell you a lot if they seem very scared, if they seem very quiet, or maybe they act out and they, they, they seem very like they have to be on watch and, and hypervigilant trace it to the home and say, look, we're here for you to the child. And we are, we're saying, look, there are three levels of the Oso safe certification. The first level I just mentioned earlier in this interview, the components, we find out in the first level, who does the child feel safe with? If they say mom and dad, fine. But we make it a point to say, look, who do you feel safe with? Is there an aunt, an uncle, a grandma, a grandpa, a close family friend? And we write that name down and we research it and we keep it on file. Granted, a scared child will say, yeah, I'm safe with mom and dad. But rest assured, Lois, abusive people, they are not quiet. They are not introverts. Their behavior will show up. It will become evident to the public. There is the third level of certification, and we're saying invoke, initiate the third level of certification when both parents are abusive, and that would be the case in an environment where there's a paid sex abuser with the father who is also abusive. We're saying get that child to who they named. It's an also safe adoption. And this is all a part of residency. We don't wait, as I mentioned, that the child is 18 years old. It's too late to, to I don't know if you have this in, because um, I believe you're in South Africa. We don't wait until they're 18. It's too late. Children know as long as they are five, six years old, get that child to the person that they want to go to, which is an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, a close family family, friend, whoever they named on the first level of certification. The sooner we get that child to safety, the better. Um, I hope I answer the question. Sometimes I go off on a, on a tangent, but ask those questions. Um, petition, speak to the superintendent of your schools to say, look, we, we found this out. 
And the more people that are vocal about this, we do not want paid sex abusers in our communities, but don't blame the child. Get the child to say, look, we want you safe because in an also safe certified property, we do not uproot the whole family. Only the abuser is evicted. And if it's both parents, then it's both parents. That's the case. Uh, the child is always the victim, always. That is such a powerful move to remove the abuser. So often women have to escape the abuser. They have to plan a getaway strategy. And it's not right. Why should they have to leave when they are the, the victim of the situation? So I love the fact that your objective is to remove the abuser. So what are some action steps that the everyday property owner can take? to help them become a safe house? Property owners, yes, you have the heat, the hot water, the electricity, the central air, all of those components, right? But they have to be vigilant to say, look, we do not condone verbal, physical, sexual abuse. And this is what it constitutes. And it's a matter of education. So as I said, we go over facts, statistics, warning signs, definitions of abuse, the difference between abuse and discipline. That is a big one. The difference between abuse and discipline for property owners, for landlords. If you see pornographic material, that is a big indicator that there could, there, we're not saying in every case, but Like I said, pornography is a big driver of violence. So um, you hear yelling and screaming. There's children that are are always yelled at and screamed at and put down. These are all, know the warning signs. That's a big big way to have defense, if you will, for your your properties, um, to know those warning signs. See, this we're trying to change people's psyche because a lot of landlords and property owners, they say, oh, it's none of my business. It's none of my business. As long as I get the rent every month, I'm out of it. But we're saying, look, don't think that you are exempt because your your good paying, well-behaved tenants, residents will leave. Who wants to hear yelling and screaming and things breaking and uh, cops coming to the residence? And then you're stuck with the abusive family. We flip all of that. We flip all of that. So it's a matter of education. We say you have to practice safety. So if you are uh, having a bad day, you come home from work, you know that you're not going to beat anyone up. You're not going to put anyone down. Say to your family, look, I need 10 minutes. I need 15 minutes. I need to be left alone and respect that. Respect is a big component of an also safe certified property. Also safe certified behavior. Mm -hmm. And what about the landlord that says, I don't want to be oh so safe because I may not get the tenants. People may not, you know, because the man usually pays pays the rent and he's an abuser. So he's not going to want to go into an oh so safe property. So the landlord may not want to be oh so safe certified. Right. No, we realize that. We realize that. We are saying that. As this, as we get more momentum and as people see that this is working, that because we are making safety a required standard condition of residency, that people feel safe, that our logo is outside of the property and they recognize the logo. Oh, wow. I know what that logo means, that it's home violence conscious. They have systems and mechanisms in place in case violence happens. I would rather live in an also safe certified property versus one that isn't. We believe that more and more as we get more and more momentum and people hear about us, that the properties that are are not also safe certified, they will be replaced by getting also safe certified. So we realize that. And we're saying, look, Mr. and Miss Landlord, let's say you have 10 units. Five of them are vacant and five of them 
are not. There's people there. And all five of them, they don't want to be OSO safe certified. However, we're introducing, we're saying as a way, as, as a solution, we'll say, look, uh, let's say you have your lease, your, your, the remainder of your lease. Uh, 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 we are in October. Uh, for the remainder of the year, if you get OSO safe certified, we will, you, the landlord has to agree, we will reduce your rent. Mr. and Miss Tenant, let's say $25, $50 a month for the remainder of your lease if you, re- if you agree to get OSO safe certified. But then once your lease is up, then you have to become like the rest of the building. Otherwise, you cannot stay here as an exchange of consideration. And this is why we're going to insurance companies because we could say, look, Mr. and Miss Landlord, your insurance rates will go down if you get OSO safe certified. So it's a financial incentive for a landlord, a property owner to get OSO safe certified because that way they're more motivated to do this. I hope I answered the question. It's a very ambitious and a very worthwhile project. So I wish you well with it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate the exposure because the more that people know about this uh, we feel that we're setting a new standard and, and it's we're moving the real estate industry in this direction because no one should live with abuse. No one, so especially about, children. So talking about exposure, if you could have a billboard on the side of the street with anything on it, what would you put on it? You have the right to be safe in your own home. Safety needs to become a a required standard condition of residency. Just because you are a parent, it doesn't give you the right to abuse your child. Fabulous. Very, very strong words. I'm working on a, a project called Be Brave. The objective is to stop harassment and sexual violence. Well, in that context, what does the word brave mean to you? Being very, feeling the fear and doing it anyway, whatever that it is. So being brave is that fear is present, very much present. However, you do what's right anyway. Great. Love that definition. So any last tips for abused women? In a situation, can you give them any advice on what they should do? Yes. Know that it's not their fault, that they're not alone. To document their abuse in in any capacity. To do whatever is in their power to get the abuser out. If they are in a real estate contract, if they're just dating, They have to know that they deserve to be in a better relationship, in a good relationship, to say that over and over again in their psyche. I deserve to be in a good relationship. I deserve to be in a good relationship. To not rationalize, oh, well, he just pushed me, or it's my fault. It's not your fault that he's an alcoholic or that you took out the garbage at seven o'clock instead of eight o'clock. That's ridiculous. You have to know that there are good men out there that where there is, they will never lay a hand on you. They will never even think about laying a hand on you, let alone verbally, physically, sexually abuse you. And to get therapy, we are big proponents of therapy. As I mentioned in the interview, we make it a part of residency, whether you rent, whether you own, whether you have a mortgage or not, get some type of therapy, even if it's group, individual. And again, it it requires bravery. You're going to be scared. There's going to be a lot of noise in your head. What if somebody finds out this is stupid? What if I can't afford it? See that 
if you go to a religious affiliate, whatever your religious affiliation is, it doesn't matter. But usually local churches, synagogues and mosques, even they may offer free therapy. So take advantage of that. Any therapy is better than no therapy because it'll make you aware and it will help you to make changes. Your children, if you have children, you want them to see you empowered and to see you free and to see you safe. Because if you do that for yourself, your children will emulate that. So do it for them. Do it for yourself. And... I would say those would be the best things. I hope I answered the question. Thank you. How can our listeners reach you? My website is ososafe.com. That's O-S-S-O-S-A-F-E.com. My direct email is sabrina at ososafe.com. I am on all the major social media platforms, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. I have a, a YouTube that I just started for children that are being abused. I'm very open about addressing them, but I'm calling it Oso Safe Kids. So if anyone Googles Oso Safe Kids, I'm speaking to all children, but especially abused children, and to kind of unite children that are in safe homes, as well as children that aren't, to help each other out. So I am on YouTube, and uh, that would be the best way. Well, I'm watching your progress with great interest because I think this could be a fantastic movement around the world. So good luck. Go well with it. And thank you so much for being Thank you, Lois. And I would like to invite all of our listeners to fly free. Thank you for listening to Walking Without Skin. We would love your feedback, opinions, suggestions, and ratings. Please share this podcast far and wide to encourage more people to share their stories with vulnerability and authenticity.